So Nikon's got some new cameras in the works. Are they going to hit a home run? Is Sony going to fold up like a cheap suit? Let's find out this morning on The Morning Jolt. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another edition of The Morning Jolt. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. What's up? So the first thing we're talking about is Nikon's brand new cameras. They're coming out in roughly about a week, August 23rd to be exact. At least that is the date that they have on their website. First thing I want to talk about is the branding, okay? They are saying that they are calling this new mount the Z-mount. An entirely new line of lenses are supposed to be in the works to be developed for this new mount. Apparently, they've also decided to call the new lenses the Z Nikkor lenses or the I, I also saw another uh, brand name I think it was called Noct N O C T uh, Noct Nikkor or Nikkor Noct no one really knows for sure they're supposed to be coming out with several new lenses now the native lenses that are rumored to be available at launch which is I don't know if it, I don't know if it's going to be launched next week or if it's just being announced next week but I mean they've been teasing this crap for yeah, a long, long time. But the native lenses they're supposed to be coming out with is a 24 to 70 f4 zoom, which I am thinking I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that that might be the standard kit lens that ends up coming with this system, 24 to 70 f4. And on a full frame, that wouldn't be too bad. They're also going to be releasing a 50 millimeter f1.8 prime, which is good. A new nifty 50 for the new system and a wide angle lens. There's a potential that it could either be 24, 28, or 35 millimeter f 1.8 so we're going to start off with a couple of fast medium wide angle and a 24 to 70 f4 zoom i think it's a pretty good start but you know i think they could have done a little bit better i, I if they're going to entice the pros to be you know maybe switching over or whatever they maybe should have had the holy trinity wide angle your 24 to 70 your 70 to 200 they really maybe should have gotten those down too if they wanted this to be a compelling offering right out of the gate uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. <sighs> Nikon, you never cease to disappoint. So anyway, that's going to be the branding. It's going to be Z. So let the World War Z begin. All right, now let's talk about form and function. I think that as with most Nikon cameras, except for the DF, I thought the DF was a sexy camera and all their old Nikromat and, and, and all those cameras. But this seems to be a little bit more on the uh, function over form side. So if we take a look at this image, this is the Nikon Z whatever, Z6 or Z7. And I'm not saying it looks bad. It just, it looks like a tool. I mean, it's it's going to be meant to be used. So it's not going to be a, a real look or anything. Um, so if you don't mind, you know, just using a tool and that's it. If you don't like looking at your cameras, I happen to like looking at mine. I hug it and I caress it and I, I look at it. You know, I, I like to look. And that's the reason I got uh, Fujifilm cameras because they, you know, the camera has a soul, man. It, it, it looks nice. It wants to be sexy. It struts its stuff while sitting there not doing anything. Does that even make sense? If you take a look at the camera, I mean, it's it's got everything, you know, that you would need to get your job done. Now, this is just a mock-up. We don't know if this is, you know, what the button layout's going to be like. We don't know if any of this stuff is, you know design final or not but you know this gives you a general idea of maybe what you could expect if you decided to pick this camera up so if we take a look you know you, you got plenty of buttons i don't see many function buttons i don't know how they're going to implement that uh just because we don't know all the particulars we don't know all the specific details but um i'm afraid and i hope that i'm wrong that this might be a menu driven setup and I, honestly i wouldn't be horribly Terrified of that as long as they have a really, really good uh, touchscreen implementation. But if they don't, ugh. now just to give you a quick comparison of what this camera could potentially look like right next to a Nikon D850, it's pretty huge. I, I was actually expecting it to be a bit smaller, but if the dimensions of this are accurate, I mean, this is a uh, it's a much bigger camera than I was expecting. It's probably more in line with say like the uh, Fujifilm H1 or maybe the, um, I don't know. It, it just, it, it's probably much thinner. It's probably not as thick. Uh, the grip seems to be well-made though. So it's probably going to be pretty ergonomic for those of you that have extremely large hands, you got big hands. But the thing I want you all to notice here is that against the Nikon D850, look at the size of that mount. 
I mean, it is ridiculously crazy how big this mount is. And you can see the full frame sensor inside this mount. It is huge. You can see the metal ring. It is huge. So I am beginning to wonder if they're not going to use this mount for literally every sensor that they ever put in a camera from here on out. Because this, in my opinion, will house medium format. It'll obviously house full frame. It'll house APS-C. And if, you know, Nikon ever got a wild hair and decided to make a micro four thirds or a one inch sensor or whatever, this mount could pretty much accommodate everything. Now, as far as positioning themselves to basically try and retake over the world, they were going to need a mount like this. It was going to have to accommodate everything that they threw at it. One mount, one size, any sensor they want in there, they could literally do anything they wanted with a mount this big. Most people don't shoot medium format, but if they ever wanted to shoot medium format, if they ever wanted to create and compete with the other camera brands like Fujifilm, uh, speaking of Fujifilm, let's take a look at a comparison between this camera and the GFX. So as you can see, that is a medium format sensor inside this mount and it fits perfectly so if they wanted to go this route if they wanted to compete in this space they could it could literally do this full frame APS-C and that basically takes aim at almost every other brand so if they do manage to pull this off and they really nail it they I mean because they have got to send this camera to the moon like it has got to be on point because if they fudge this thing if they have any debacles like oil and dust on the sensor like with the d600 or all the recalls of the other ones i mean it's they they've got to nail this this they cannot mess this one up whatsoever because if they do every other company is going to smell blood in the water holy and they're going to knock them out boom boom now that brings up the question of adapters because while they do plan on creating a whole new line of lenses, they have an entire catalog of other lenses that they could easily adapt to the system. Now, whether they will or not, who knows? But that would be one of the best ways to keep all those older DSLR dinosaur users um, from switching to something else. You know, if they've been sitting around waiting for Nikon to actually do something serious with their mirrorless lineup. Um, if they happen to introduce uh, an adapter, I wonder how much that would be. And if they would, how many of their different types of lenses would it support? Because you've got to remember, some of those old Nikon lenses depended on there being a motor inside the camera body. And without that, I don't, I really, I don't think that you could pull that off with an adapter. But you also have to consider that Sony tried to do the exact same thing with the A mount. I think there were, you know, six people that bought it. But anyway, the 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 adapter was just not. I mean, I don't know. No one used it. They, everyone wanted native glass. No one. I mean, there are a lot of people that like to use like old vintage lenses if they're just manual focus. I mean, because those adapters are wicked cheap. You know, they're like. 15, 20 bucks at best. But when you start getting into these, some of these uh, full autofocus uh, adapters, I mean, I've seen them go really, really high. And I don't think that Nikon wants to do anything like that. I mean, they need to try to compete because there is one camera in this space that Nikon and Canon both, when they have their, their launch, the release, their announcement, uh, it's going to be the Sony a7 Mark III because they managed to pack a full frame with a crap ton of features all for two grand. That's going to be the camera to beat for them. And if they try to, if they try to ignore their old users, if they try to go, well, this is new stuff and you know, you're just effed. That's the main reason why I think that they're not going to uh, completely do away with DSLRs. I think they're going to continue to produce these cameras, DSLRs, and mirrorless in parallel until the demand for mirrorless goes above and beyond the DSLRs. Hey, we're not making them anymore. They'll just stop making them. They'll just, you know, slowly taper back production, meet the demand. But I'm telling you, mirrorless is the future. Mo most people are going to be moving toward mirrorless. And they'll just slowly wean the DSLR production down until it is zero. And it will be zero one day. Now, I want to check out this... Um, article that was over at sonyalpharumors.com. I'll put um, 
uh, a link to this article down in the description box down below. But they wrote uh, an article and it says on August 28th, Nikon will launch the new Z6 and Z7 camera along an impressive 58 F 0.95 lens. And Canon is rumored to announce their full frame mirrorless on either September 4th or 5th in these days. Uh, had an informal chat with people close to Sony. So take it with a grain of salt. They have been told by Sony managers that Sony is not unprepared by Canon and Nikon's full-frame mirrorless launch. I guess with not unprepared, they mean more or less they know what kind of specs those cameras are going to have. And they also said Sony has new tech and the necessary resources to outperform both systems. They told me to expect a serious answer after the Canon Nikon announcements. It goes on to say, of course, Nikon and Canon folks can argue that this might only be some bullish manager talk, but somehow I've got the feeling that in this case, Sony is telling the truth. Canon and Nikon surely can make cameras with better er ergonomy. Is that even a word? But Sony is learning fast. And after all, they have the leading tech when it comes to sensor quality and other electronic parts like the new 5.6 million dot EVF. It would be nice to get a new stunning Sony A7S Mark III right after the Canon and Nikon announcements, something that will, quote, out-wow them. And I find that to be kind of an interesting thing uh, because if Canon and Nikon do not deliver, I mean, it, it, like, this is going to have... And it has to go beyond hype. You know, all this hype, it's, it's good. It generates buzz. It gets people interested. But, I mean, if this thing falls flat... And then Sony releases this, you know, something new and amazing or revolutionary or it, it doesn't matter. This thing could probably see into the depths of hell with a kit lens, whatever Sony's, you know, if it's going to be an A7 Mark III, I mean, holy. I mean, these damn things can already see in, in the dark as it is. Yeah, if these things fall flat and then Sony, you know, ups them, one ups them right there before they've ever got the cameras in anyone's hands, it's going to be rough. So while I don't have an official release date i do have an announcement date which is august 23rd you can you know keep track they've got a little countdown and everything on their website or whatever oh, it's supposed to make you super excited i'm not i mean i'm looking forward to it but i'm not like excited uh, i hope it does well i hope it does awesome i'm not bashing i'm just saying that they're gonna have to bring the pain or it is going to be disastrous the camera to beat right now is going to be the sony a7 mark iii with all the stuff that they managed to pack into that particular camera for that particular price tag, that is the camera to beat for Canon and Nikon. And if they don't, sad days. But hey, I wanted to show you all one last thing. Anyway, it's it's hilarious. It's got Sony in a casket, and then it says, who are we kidding? We all knew it would be over when Nikon and Canon took it seriously. It was fun while it lasted. Yeah, I really hope that they are as happy about the announcement and release uh, as they are optimistic. So that's all I've got for you guys today. So uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what do these cameras have to have in order for you to maybe consider picking one up or switching from another brand or, you know, is it even worth switching anymore? Because Nikon and Canon have a track record of trickling out new features slowly but surely. Like I am spoiled with Fuji. If they release anything, man, I'm just like, hey, let me go update my firmware and I'll have some new stuff on my camera. But Canon Nikon, man, they, uh, hey, wait two years and then you can buy a whole new camera. All right, thanks. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, I, I'm at least interested. I'm at least uh, embracing the competition. So uh, I, I like it. I dig it. At any rate, guys, thanks so much for stopping here at The Morning Jolt. And I hope to see you guys again tomorrow morning. Peace.